After my time at S&P Global's World Hydrogen North America Conference, I came away with a clear mission statement. The hydrogen economy needs to stop prioritizing what's possible and start focusing on what's feasible. The hydrogen sector is buzzing with futuristic visions. I'm thinking gigawatt scale solar powered electrolyzers or hydrogen powered aviation. But too often, these ideas overlook the technology we can deploy now to make a real impact. And so today, I'll zero in on the best current technologies, the cheapest production methods that maintain low to zero carbon intensity, practical storage solutions, and real world applications, including hydrogen derivatives like ammonia and methanol. I'll also address particular emissions like NOx, SOx, and PM2.5, which are often ignored in the hydrogen hype. While we absolutely need to keep researching and developing new technologies, we can't sacrifice the potential of what's already feasible. All of this on today's Hydrogen Podcast. In our first segment, I'm zeroing in on hydrogen production methods that are feasible today, balancing cost, scale, and low carbon intensity. The establishment narrative pushes green hydrogen via electrolysis as the holy grail. But let's be real. Electrolyzers powered by renewables are often intermittent, and at $5 to $6 per kilogram, green hydrogen struggles to compete economically. Instead, the most practical, scalable, and cost-effective method right now is steam methane reforming, or SMR, with carbon capture and storage, often called blue hydrogen. SMR uses natural gas and steam to produce hydrogen, and when paired with CCS, it can achieve low to zero carbon intensity while leveraging existing infrastructure. But let's break down this technology. SMR reacts methane with steam at 700 to 1000 degrees Celsius over a nickel catalyst, producing 3 to 4 kilograms of hydrogen per kilogram of methane, with an efficiency rate of 65 to 75%. Without CCS, SMR emits 9 to 11 kilograms of CO2 per kilogram of hydrogen, but modern CCS systems capture 90 to 95% of emissions, reducing the carbon intensity to 1 to 2 kilograms of CO2 per kilogram of hydrogen, well below the EU's low carbon threshold of 3.4 kilograms of CO2 per kilogram of hydrogen. But particulate emissions are minimal. SMR with CCS produces near zero NOx, SOx, and PM2.5 as the process occurs in a controlled reactor. Unlike combustion based systems that emit 1 to 2 grams per kilowatt hour of NOx and 0.1 to 0.2 grams per kilowatt hour of PM2.5, this per the International Maritime Organization. The captured CO2, around 10 million tons a year for a 1 million ton hydrogen plant, can be stored in depleted gas reservoirs or salt caverns, which hold up to 6 terawatt hours of energy equivalent, this per studies on underground storage. Economically, SMR with CCS shines. A 100 megawatt plant costing 4 to 600 million dollars produces 20,000 tons of hydrogen annually. At $5 to $6 per kilogram, that's $100 to $120 million in revenue, with production costs at $1.50 to $2 a kilogram, this price being adjusted for 2025 natural gas prices and CCS costs, netting $60 to $70 million in profit, or a 15 to 20% IRR. The Inflation Reduction Act's 45V credit, which is $3 per kilogram, could reduce effective costs to $2 to $3 per kilogram, making blue hydrogen competitive with gray hydrogen, which is currently $1 to $2 a kilogram, while slashing emissions. Scaling to 1 gigawatt, or $4 to $6 billion, produces 200,000 tons per year, creating 3,000 to 4,000 jobs and adding 200 to $300 million to local economies, this per the U.S. Department of Energy estimates. The U.S. hydrogen market, which is $15 billion this year, could see blue hydrogen dominate 50% of that, or $7.5 billion, by 2030, this per McKinsey projections. The narrative that green hydrogen is the only path ignores reality. SMR with CCS leverages 100 trillion cubic feet of U.S. natural gas reserves, this per the EIA, and existing pipelines, unlike green hydrogen's need for new infrastructure. But with that said, challenges still remain. CCS adds 50 cents to $1 per kilogram to the costs, and methane leakage above 4% can negate carbon benefits. 
Still, SMR with CCS is the feasible choice today, cutting 1,000 metric tons of CO2 per year from current hydrogen production emissions while avoiding NOx, SOx, and PM2.5 pollution. Next, let's talk storage. Hydrogen's low volumetric density, or 0.09 kilograms per cubic meter at standard conditions, makes storage a challenge, especially for large-scale applications. The establishment often pushes underground storage in salt caverns or compressed gas, but these aren't universally feasible. Salt caverns, while cost-effective at a quarter to $1.58 per kilogram, are geographically limited, and compressed gas at 700 bar requires expensive tanks, which is $500 per kilogram of hydrogen for carbon fiber composites. Instead, let's focus on what's practical. Liquid Organic Hydrogen Carriers, or LOHCs, specifically Toluent Methylcyclohexane, or TOL-MCH systems, which offer safe, scalable storage using existing liquid fuel infrastructure. TOL-MCH works by hydrogenating toluene into methylcyclohexane, storing about 47 kilograms of hydrogen per cubic meter, then dehydrogenating it to release hydrogen on demand. The process operates at 150 to 300 degrees Celsius with platinum catalysts with an energy penalty of about 30%. A 3,156 ton hydrogen storage system serving 200 ton per day user holds hydrogen as MCH in standard tanks. No high pressure or cryogenic systems needed. The levelized cost of storage is $1.84 per kilogram of hydrogen, this per nature communications, adding modestly to delivery costs in regions like the Midwest, though it's higher in Central California due to heating costs. MCH is stable, non-toxic, and non-explosive, with a flash point of 6 degrees Celsius, making it safer than ammonia per safety assessments. Economically, a 3,156-ton system costs 50 to $70 million, storing 50,000 tons of MCH, or the equivalent to 3,156 tons of hydrogen. At $5 to $6 per kilogram of hydrogen, the stored hydrogen is worth $15.8 to $18.9 million, with an annual operating cost of $5 to $6 million, yielding a 10 to 12% IRR. Scaling to 10,000 tons of hydrogen, or $150 to $200 million, supports gigawatt-scale industrial sites, creating 300 jobs and adding $30 million to local economies. TOL-MCH systems emit no SOx, NOx, or PM2.5 during storage, though dehydrogenation heating emits 0.1 to 1 kilogram of CO2 per kilogram of hydrogen, unless using renewables. The global LOHC market, currently $500 million this year, could reach $5 billion by 2030, this per industry trends. The narrative of underground storage as the only solution ignores accessibility. LOHCs use existing fuel networks, avoiding the $1 million per kilometer cost of new hydrogen pipelines. Challenges include the energy penalty and catalyst costs, roughly $10,000 per kilogram of platinum, but TOL-MCH is feasible now, enabling hydrogen distribution without massive infrastructure overhauls. Now, let's explore applications, focusing on heavy industry and hydrogen derivatives like ammonia, which are feasible today. Hydrogen's biggest impact is in the hardware-based sectors like steel and chemicals, where direct electrification isn't practical. Now, let's start with steelmaking, which emits 2.6 billion tons of CO2 globally, this per the IEA. Hydrogen can replace coal in direct reduced iron or DRI processes, cutting emissions by 90%. A 1 million ton per year steel plant using 50,000 tons of blue hydrogen reduces CO2 emissions by 1.5 million tons annually with zero NOx, SOx, or PM2.5 versus coals, 1 to 2 grams per kilowatt hour of NOx, and 0.1 to 0.2 grams per kilowatt hour PM2.5, this per the EPA estimates. At $5 to $6 per kilogram, hydrogen costs $250 to $300 million a year, but carbon credits at $50 per ton of CO2 and efficiency gains saves $100 million, netting $50 million in profit or a 10% IRR. Next, ammonia production, which is a hydrogen derivative, offers massive potential. The U.S. produces 13 million tons of hydrogen yearly, needing 130 million tons of hydrogen, this per the USDA. Using blue hydrogen at $5 to $6 per kilogram, 
Ammonia costs $600 per ton versus $500 per ton with gray hydrogen, but cuts 1.3 million tons of NOx, or 10 kilograms per ton of ammonia, and 5 million tons of CO2. A 1 million ton per year ammonia plant uses 10,000 tons of hydrogen, or 50 to $60 million worth, generating $600 million in revenue, with $100 million being profit, or a 15% IRR, after 45V credits. Ammonia also serves as a marine fuel, powering ships with zero NOx or SOx emissions, reducing maritime pollution by 5 million tons of NOx yearly, this per the IMO estimates. Economically, a $1 billion investment in hydrogen-based steel and ammonia plants creates 2,000 jobs and adds $150 million to local economies. The global ammonia market, which is $80 billion this year, could see 20% from blue hydrogen by 2030. The narrative that hydrogen derivatives are futuristic ignores their current use. Ammonia is already a traded commodity, and steelmakers like ArcelorMittal are piloting DRI with hydrogen. Challenges include retrofitting plants and ammonia toxicity, but these applications are feasible now, delivering immediate emissions reductions. And so quickly, let's tie this together. SMR with CCS produces 200,000 tons per year of low carbon hydrogen at $5 to $6 per kilogram, cutting 1,000 metric tons of CO2 and eliminating NOx, SOx, and PM2.5 emissions. TOL MCH stores 10,000 tons of hydrogen for $150 to $200 million, enabling distribution with minimal environmental impact. And applications in steel and ammonia use 60,000 tons of hydrogen, saving 6.5 million tons of CO2 and 1.3 million tons of NOx, creating 5,000 jobs and adding $380 million to economies. Together, these feasible solutions reduce 8 million tons of particulates annually, proving hydrogen's immediate potential. And technically, SMR with CCS pairs with TOLMCH to supply steel and ammonia with zero tailpipe emissions. Economically, $6 to $7 billion in investments yields $800 million in profits, despite higher hydrogen costs. The $500 billion hydrogen market by 2030 could see 60% from blue hydrogen, LOHCs, and industrial applications. The establishment pushes exotic solutions like photocatalytic water splitting, but these are years away. Photocatalysis yields 1 to 2 mmol of hydrogen per gram catalyst, this per Science Direct, versus SMR's 200,000 tons per year. We must continue researching these technologies, high temperature electrolysis, or metal hydride storage solutions, but not at the expense of what works now. SMR with CCS, LOHCs, and industrial applications are feasible, scalable, and ready to deploy, delivering real emission reductions without waiting for, quote, the perfect solution. All right, that's it for me, everyone. If you have a second, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a good review on whatever platform it is that you listen to. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, YouTube, whatever it is. That would be a tremendous help to the show. And as always, if you ever have any feedback, you're welcome to email me directly at info at hydrogenpodcast.com. So until next time, keep your eyes up and honor one another.